Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. If one of your goals is to place top 10 at a free to play and low spend level, or if you're just wailing out, then this guide will be able to help you understand exactly what to expect when it comes to this event. Stick around a while to find out what I would suggest you do for your account in preparation for the Rise of Kingdoms event, Zenith of Power. <laughs> First things first, what is Zenith of Power and why is it important? So, Zenith of Power is the power-up event that comes around about four times a year and is widely regarded as the hardest event to win in the game. There's a Spring Zenith, which currently uh, just concluded at the time of this recording. Let me scroll out here and find them. Here's our winner. <coughs> and it's obviously it's got that nice animation and uh, we only had one in our kingdom, but he managed to place top ten. Um, and we also have a summer, fall, and winter event. Naturally, one for every season. It rewards the most valuable city skins in the game, which range from all troop types, uh, to open field specialty. Dynastic Conquer, a skin that is from Zenith Power, I'd say about a year ago, is still regarded as the best open field skin in the game that gives 8% defense to all troop types while only subtracting 10% cap attack. So what is my Zenith of Power history and why can I, debatably, give you reliable information? Um, first of all, I've won this event before. You can actually see on my uh, screen right now, I have this skin. It is called the Supreme Warrior. It's the infantry attack. This was the city theme that came out about nine months ago. I won it when I first migrated to this kingdom uh, and back in KVK2. So it's a little bit easier to win in KVK2, but Regardless, the concepts and the tips that I give throughout this video still apply, no matter what. Um, I think I got second place. I don't have a favorited screenshot, uh, which I definitely regret. I do have this, though, that was going on at the same time as the Zenith of Power event, so I obviously won. I ended up pushing about 28, 29 total million power, and obviously I've gotten a lot of use out of this skin ever since. At the time that I won this skin, my account was about a year and a half old, and I was arguably a super, super low spender. I think I didn't spend a dime in this game until my account was at least a year, and then I didn't even do the recharge events for a long, long time. However, I was extremely, extremely active. So I was able to barb chain and KVKs, I was always spending my action points, and I was able to save up enough speed ups and resources to compete in an event like this. Since then, my spending has gone up pretty dramatically, um, and I've been saving speed ups kind of ever since that win. I, I did have one MGE that I used for Tommy, where I powered up about uh, 10 million because I really wanted to finish her. And uh, do I look back and regret that? Yeah, I had no Duke title, no buffs, no training buffs. I just kind of uh, really wanted Tommy. Anyway. Since then, I've been saving uh, quite a lot of resources and speed ups so that I can win another open field city skin. This might look like a lot to you, um, <laughs> and you might be wondering how many speed ups there actually are. Well, there's a handy tool called ROK Calculator that actually lets you do the exact math of all of your speed ups and resources on your account. I'll make sure to leave a link to this website in the description, but for now, why don't we hop over and see exactly what I have on this account. Great, so here we are now in ROK Calculator. I've gone ahead and done the due diligence of putting in all of my speed ups that I saw, or that you saw, on the screen just before this. It comes out to a total of about 2,300 days of speed ups, right? So that's a lot. You notice that I didn't put in any research or building speed ups. That is because I am a T5 player with max buildings and research, so I can't actually gain any power from this. If you are T4 uh, transitioning to T5, these are actually very, very valuable because as I'll mention later, you have an opportunity to gain a lot of power from just a few of these speed ups. The next thing that you're gonna do after you have just inputted all of your speed ups into the calculator is you're gonna go here to MGE training and you are going to enter your total training speed bonus. 
As a reminder, you can find out what your trading speed is by clicking on the information tab on your training building. Right now, I'm at 65%. This can be increased by a few things. One, being in the alliance that has access to the holy site, which give training speed. So you can see right down here, the storm altar gives 5% training speed. My VIP level is 17, so I get that extra 5% over VIP 16. Fortunately, there's no extra boost for VIP 18, so 17 is the highest for the training speed currently. You can also have the Duke title, which is a kingdom buff. Um, you can have the overall kingdom buff, which is another 10%, and then you can receive a rune, which can give anywhere from 5 to 15%. Lastly, and I would highly recommend this, make sure that your civilization is Germany. That way you can get that last 5% bonus training speed. All right, so back to the calculator. The reason why I've put 95% total training speed is because I am accounting for every single one of those buffs that I just mentioned, as well as a 10% training rune. Yes, there could technically be a 15% training rune, and then this would be 100%. However, oftentimes is the case that you just have to train without one because you're in home kingdom and you didn't get lucky enough uh, killing those guardians. So I put 95% because on average, you will at least have a 10% training rune uh, to help train. So after I've put in my training speed bonus, I went ahead and put in all of the T4 to T5 that I have on my account currently, as well as any T3 or T2 or T1. Obviously, don't waste your speed ups on Siege. Please don't do it. Uh, even if you have T4, yes, it is efficient, but only do that out of absolute necessity because Siege are currently pretty useless. Other than that, I put in the 800,000, 900,000, and 850,000 T5 that I was training because if you scroll down to the bottom, it shows you exactly how many days it will take you in order to train all those troops as well as the food, wood, stone, and gold requirements. So as mentioned earlier, I have about 2,300 total days of speed ups in order to train this many troops. I would need exactly this many speed ups. So this is my cap, 37.57 total million power gained for a Zenith of Power. So knowing what we now know about my account and how much I could push, right? Resources aren't a problem, fortunately, because I have farms with farm accounts and I've been able to accumulate quite a lot of resources. Um, but should I have gone for this path Zenith? My answer to that is an absolute no. Why? One, I need speed ups and resources so that I can fight in KVK. And two, you don't want to just go for a Zenith just to go for a Zenith. You want a plan, right? So I already have an infantry skin plus 15%. This most recent one was plus 15% defense for infantry. The amount of gain that that skin would have given my account for the amount that I would have put in for that skin is very, very minimal. I already have an archer skin, right? Even though it's not the best, it's good enough, right? It's the flight of the heron. It gives plus 10% archer attack. And similarly, I plan to purchase, oh my god, there's a coming back. I plan to purchase the divine abode, which is a plus 10% cav defense skin. So I will have an infantry, an archer, and a cav skin. What is left? Well, it's an open field skin. And while Twilight Falls is great for open field, right, arguably one of the best, it is nothing close to a plus 8% health or skill damage theme that might be coming in the future. We just don't quite know yet. So that's what I'm saving for. Also, personally, I think that it is a little too risky to only be able to put up 35 or 30 or even 40 sometimes million power because if you dump 40 million power and get 11th place, that is the worst possible thing that can happen for your account. I will go over examples later on of when it might be okay for you to lower your standards, but for now, just keep in the back of your mind that in order for, to go for a Zenith of Power, you need to know that you can win. So now I'm going to go over what a lot of you are probably here for in the first place, and that's basic and advanced tips for Zenith of Power preparation. First and foremost, um, the number one thing that you can do to prepare for Zenith of Power is spend a lot of money. All right? This will give you more speed ups than any event will. The larger your wallet, the better your chances are. Unfortunately, that's just how the game is. 
Another thing that you can do, um, kind of as a joke, is be a rank 4 or rank 5 of your kingdom. That way, whenever Zenith of Power comes around, you can control the kingdom buffs that go out so you can perfectly plan for your Zenith. Now that we have kind of some of those joke tips out of the way, why don't we go into, at a very basic level, what you should be doing in order to prepare for Zenith Power, right? Number one thing is, while you are in the offseason, spend your AP, all right? Spend your AP action points, for those who don't know, right, on forts. You want to farm barbarian forts as much as possible. If you don't have the time, kill barbarians. But it is the most critical thing for you to spend down your action points, right? The next thing is you want to be in a top one or two alliance in your kingdom. This will give you many action points through forts and other rewards through alliance purchases. Next, you want to complete all of the free-to-play events that reward you with speedups and resources, right? So this includes things like Soroli Crisis, Golden Kingdom, right? Some of them are time-consuming, but if you're trying to save up, especially if you don't spend a lot of money, you need to be doing these events, right? Next thing you know, <laughs> you're going to have two, three, four, five years of speedups and tons of resources, and you're going to be starting to put yourself in a position to win this event. Next thing is you want to hoard like you have never hoarded before, all right? Do not compete in 20 gold head events. Do not spend a single speed up outside of minimum pre-KVK requirements. Skip, skip. But when does this game get fucking good? <laughs> all right, all joking aside, and you would not believe how long it took me to record and to create that. I'm still getting uh, used to the editing here. But all jokes aside, unless you are a spender, you cannot be spending your precious, precious speedups on events that are not going <laughs> to reward you with the Zenith of Power skin, right? If this is your goal, this needs to be at the front and the top of your priority list, all right? Okay, next thing, you do not want to compete, and I've already mentioned this, but you do not want to compete in this event unless you can win, all right? You need to be able to put up at least 30, 40, and depending on your region, right, which is a group of eight kingdoms, right? So if you go into here, and this is easier um, to see in your um, your preparation season when you're season one, season two, because they kind of look like this, right? You will be competing with eight other kingdoms. Generally, through playing in this game, you will understand how high they normally push and how high you will need in order to win this event. You can have kingdoms like 254, which are some of the top Imperiums in the game, and, and an Imperium kingdom is one of the strongest and most active kingdoms, right? In order to win a Zenith of Power there, you might need to put up 60 million power, right? That's crazy. However, in your average kingdom, right, it might only be 30. Similarly, if you go back to KVK2 or KVK3, there will be less people there to compete, and so the requirements are often much lower. Taking into account this screenshot of a buddy of mine, Canute, winning his first Zenith of Power, this was at the very end of KVK2 in our kingdom, and he won first place with 29 million power, and not only did he win, but he crushed it, right? He beat second place by over 12 million power, that's a big margin. Usually getting first place for Zenith of Power, you need, I mean, at least 40 million power or more. Uh, in this case, right, the requirements were, were pretty low. Similarly, you have another friend of mine, Kwong, who got 5th place in this Zenith of Power, and he had to push almost 40 million power for not even top, you know, 1, 2, or 3. The amount that he had to spend versus the amount that Canoe had to spend is crazy, right? And it's all because of the luck of the draw, and we started um, Season of Conquest just a few months before this moment, so the competition rose substantially. It is also important to keep in mind that, generally speaking, your infantry and your uh, cavalry city themes will be the ones that are the most competed for. This is because they are the most popular troop types. Archers kind of get thrown to the dirt a little bit, so you can expect that Zenith of Powers for both infantry and cavalry will be very high. The only thing that will be higher than that is an open field city theme, which is again why I'm still scared that I'm not going to have enough to push for my city theme when that thing eventually comes around. Alright, now that we're done with the basic 
level of tips that you know you can do for preparation for this event. Now let's go over some of the more advanced levels. So one thing that you can do is barb chain during KVK, which leads to incredible, incredible rewards. If you don't know what barb chaining is, I'll just demonstrate real quick. Right? And I even have a preset for this because I do it so often. Right? Is when you go up to a barbarian and you hit it and then you use the AoE of one of the commanders to attract a second mob and a second barbarian so that you get the rewards for that kill while only spending the action points for one of them. When you are in KVK, the rewards that you get per barbarian is absolutely absurd. I can go more into depth on this in another video if you would like to have a guide. However, there are a lot of guides that exist already. I would recommend checking them out uh, just in case. So I'll demonstrate once here for you, and then I will go ahead and skip on to the next topic. So as you can see, my Richard Active Seal goes off, and then my YSG. This Barbarian gets pulled to me, and I didn't spend any AP. I only spent AP doing this, right? And then you can jump around just like this. Anyway, this is a topic for another video. Why don't we keep going? All right, the next most important thing that you can do is having at least three or more farm accounts, right? As you look at my city, you can probably see that I have one here, one here, and one here. This one is the only one that's really producing many resources, but this one's getting there, and this is obviously another startup. These are, I mean, if you're living under a rock, maybe you haven't heard of it, but these need to be in your account for you to participate and play this game. If you're an active fighter, there's no way you're going to have enough resources if you don't have farm accounts. I have three. I currently have some more um, coming up. However, those are at different kingdoms that I'll have to migrate over here, right? So I'm eventually going to have five, but they take a lot of tedious work, but it's so, so worth it. All right, and the next tip that I have for you guys is for you to only, yes, only train T4 or T2 in the off season. Right? So you can see here I'm training uh, T4 uh, infantry and cavalry. I've got this boost right now set up for pre-KVK. So this is a little different, right? This is an, ex you know, an exception to my rule. But you should only train T4 and T2 in the offseason. You might ask, why T2? Well, sometimes you have events. Actually, let's see if we have one now. Right? And we do, right? So you're going to have events like Mighty Army that come around that require you to train 10,000 units in a one reset period. You're not going to be able to do this without using your speed ups unless you train T1 Siege or T2 of your other troop types, right? And then the reason you only train T4 instead of T5 is upgrading T4 to T5 is the single most efficient way that you are going to gain power in Rise of Kingdoms. So the power required, or the speed ups required, excuse me, to speed up a T4 troop to a T5 troop is so small compared to just raw training T5 with your speed ups, so you want to upgrade as many T4 to T5 as possible. Let me give you an example of exactly what this looks like on the rock calculator that we used earlier. Okay, so I went in and I adjusted the amount of T4 to T5 training that we were doing. If, and this is a big if because I don't see anyone ever having this much T4, but if you were to have this much T4 in your city and you were to use the same amount of speed ups, that I had used, and if you recall previously in the video, I said that with 2300 days of speed ups, I could gain 37.57 million power. However, that was with me training a lot of T5. Now, if we scroll down, look at this 2100 days of speed ups, and I'm gaining 54 million power, right? That is a whole lot more. What is that? 17 million power more than what I could be doing. If I was if I was raw training T5 and I'm using less speed ups, right? So the more T4 you have in your city, the better it is, and the higher your chances are to win Zenith of Power. Jumping back to my city, there is one more thing that newer players can take advantage of that us older players can't, and that's actually waiting to upgrade your hospital and your gold mine to 25 at the very last minute. So, in order for you to upgrade these things, you will need 2,000 gems per building, right? And each one will give you a substantial amount of power. For every hospital you upgrade, you will gain 307 
thousand power, right? That's a lot. If you go into here, look at the jump that you get from a level 24 hospital to a level 25 hospital. You also get a nice 1% tr all troop health bonus, which is critical for the open field, right? But if you're saving for this zenith of power, you want to leave your hospital, as I click on this, nice, you want to leave your hospitals and your gold mines at level 24 until the last second when you can upgrade them. Similar to how the hospital gives 307 power, the gold mines give 230,000 power per upgrade. So you do all those together and you have a very, very, very nice chunk of about 2 million power that you can add on for a relatively cheap amount of speed ups. You can also do the same method with your T5 training. So if you go into your academy, right, you've got your T5 training. A lot of people use Zenith of Power as a way to unlock their T5 troops by using their speed ups to gain an absurd amount of power on these technologies, right? This is another thing that you should be doing during Zenith Power to gain power efficiently, right? I want to really stress that nothing is for sure and safe in Zenith of Power, so you should do all of these big chunks of training at the very, very end. If you are already 20, you know, City Hall 25 and T5, right, then what you should be doing if you can't do all this research, you can't upgrade your, ca you know, your, not castle, sorry, your hospitals and your gold mine, right? You want to come in here and you want to save 50,000 extenders for the very last moment because you do not want to get sniped, right? Getting sniped, as mentioned earlier, is the worst thing that can possibly happen for your account, right? The best way that I can describe getting sniped and getting 11th place Zenith is <laughs> basically talking to a girl at the club for two hours, you spend $120 on drinks for her, and then she walks away with her friends, you don't even get her number, and now, except for Zenith of Power, add a few zeros to that tab, and now you are looking at what it feels like in order to lose the Zenith of Power in 11th place. It is awful. Absolutely awful. So, in conclusion, okay, at a very basic level, spend your action points, complete all of the events, hoard like you've never hoarded before, and in general, be active, okay? You want to make sure that you can win this event, so plan ahead. At an advanced level, you want to be able to barb chain, all right? You want to have farm accounts, you want to only train T4 in the off-season, and you want to wait to upgrade those hospitals and gold mines to level 25 during Zenith of Power so that you can gain the most amount of power as efficiently as possible. Alright, I know that this video now is turning into a long one, so I'll try to keep this short, but real quick, just before we finish, I want to go over the pros and cons for pushing for Zenith of Power. Should you do it, should you not do it, right? First, we're going to go through the cons. I think 99% of people who play this game should not go for Zenith of Power, and will never win a Zenith of Power, right? And you are technically better off for the overall progression of your account to spend your speed ups on those 20 gold hut events and MGE and things like that, right? And you can get a substantial amount of rewards that way. Secondly, if you are a free to play and low spender, you will most likely be zeroing your account to push for this event, and thus you will not be able to contribute much during KVK. Lastly, the amount of stress that this event will cause you will undoubtedly take years off your life. Trust me, I know from experience. So if you intend to live a while for your kids and family, take that into consideration. All right, but now for the pros. This is the event in Rise of Kingdoms. If you are an over and achiever like I am, and you want to be the best you can be regardless of your spend level, this is the quote unquote, yeah, I got it kind of event. You win this event and everyone will hold you in high respect. Secondly, as mentioned earlier, this event gives S tier city skins in the game. And having a city skin like this will make you be the go-to rally lead or troop type uh, for that specialization for whatever you choose on your city skin, right? If you have a 15% infantry attack or defense or health if they ever release that, right? That is an automatic advantage over every single march that you hit of that same troop type, right? Considering your gear is the same and other factors go into that, right? But this gives you a massive advantage for one troop type. All right, guys, <laughs> this video is shaping up to be another long one. I got to figure out how to cut down on the time, but I feel like there's so much information out there uh, that I want to get across and sometimes the only way to get it across is by being able to talk to you guys for a, you know more than 10-15 minutes so I hope I covered everything you know I appreciate it and I know this is a new channel and I know the editing might not be the greatest and the mic is probably pretty bad quality uh, but I appreciate you guys sticking out, out through the end 
if you have any more questions or I missed something, please leave me a note in the comments and I'll try to get back to you there. But anyway, thank you guys. I hope this helped you and I hope I can see you guys running around with those dope city skins. Anyway, take care and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.